Hi everyone, welcome back to the Getterbury channel. So today we've got a really exciting topic. It's pH, so get your white lab coats on, lock yourself in. No, all joking aside, pH is critically important to good enzymatic activity. Without the right enzymatic activity, you don't get the conversion that you want taking the starches that are in malt and turning it into fermentable sugar. So pH is critically important and you need to get to know the pH of your uh, water and you need to get to know the compounds in your water so that you can adjust it to make better quality beer. Now, in relation to pH, there's two uh, approaches that you could take. You can use professional quality um, pH papers. Basically, um, Take one of the papers out, pop it into the liquid for like half a second and then straight out and you're colour checking the pH across the chart that's on the pack. So pH papers, we can fine tune them from, you get the generic ones that are not the 14 and all the colours on the back of them and then they're fine tuning from not 0.5s to 5s, 3.8s to 5.4 if you want to have that real precision measurement. So pH papers couldn't be simpler. Uh, literally dip, check um, with the color and that gives you the reading. The next option that you have open to you is pH meters and we have a selection of them available. Obviously budget dependent, so we've got really cheap basic pen pH meter and um, come in these little handy carry cases. We give you the buffer solution um, for calibrating the pen and we give you a little tool for adjusting and um, the calibration as well so you can see very very basic so little clip in the back pen shape switch on the top for switching on and off you'll see it says ATC on the front of it there that's automatic temperature correction function and then when you take this off you can see the little electrode and the base of it there which is used for taking the pH reading so usually a little beaker of solution um, pop your pen into it switch it on check the reading and um, there's a little screw here for adjusting once you you do your buffer solutions up for calibrating um, you just adjust it to the 4.01 with a 6.86 pH buffer solution so that's the the real basic pen we have, as it said, two versions of that. So there's that one, and then there's one that's got a backlight. And all the difference really is, is that you get to see it in low light areas. Um, then we have this pH meter here, which also includes a temperature reading at the same time. Very, very simple. Batteries in the top. All of these come with batteries included. Electrode in the bottom. All of our pH meters also come calibrated, so you don't need to calibrate them for the first use. I would suggest that you're calibrating your meter at least once per month, just to make sure that you're getting a true reading. And also be aware that after you've taken a reading, you want to make sure that you clean the electrode properly. Suggest that the, to use distilled water. If you don't have distilled water, boiled and cooled water, um, even just as long as it's being cleaned even with water and then you're not going to have the irregular readings and the temperature at which you check the reading is important as well if you're not using an automatic temperature correction and we've um, written a blog entry on how to use these how to calibrate them and how to get the, the best out of them on the get a brood blog and we'll, we'll pop the link to the blog in the description below so you can read more about these products so look ph is critically important to make sure that you're getting the enzymatic activity and enzymatic activity means that you're getting conversion and it means that you're making good quality beer there's lots of things that can affect ph so the water you're using the grain bill the even the hops if you need to adjust um, ph there's a couple of uh, products that we do that do it really well phosphoric acid lactic acid um, you can read the dosage rates and how to use them on the Get A Brood websites. And then we have um, this um, portable pH and temperature reader. It's just a really good quality, almost um, good enough for commercial brewers. You would say at a small scale, comes in a nice little carry case. Good um, ancillary accessories, little operational manual, and then this little 
nice handheld with the good quality premium um, controls that pop into the top of it. Again, comes complete with batteries and buffer solution as well. So lots of different options for lots of different budgets there. Layman's terms, I, I know some of this can be really scientific, um, but brewing is a scientific process and there's certain parts of it that you may, as you go along your brewing journey, want to pay more attention to it and understanding pH will allow you to make better quality beer. So when I talk about the pH, if you look at the mashing process during an all-grain brew, for example, you're aiming to have, depending on the beer style, you're going to want that to be somewhere in the range of 5.2 to 5.8 in terms of pH during the mash. Important thing to state in relation to that is whenever you're checking your mash, you're going to want to make sure that you've mixed it sufficiently and give it a few minutes before you take a pH reading. Equally, if you've used a brewing calculator to calculate your recipe, like Brewer's Friend or something like that, then it'll be able to do calculations for you that you can adjust that before you start so that you're getting a consistent and accurate reading throughout the process. Now, it may be somewhere between that 5.2 to 5.8 to get that sweet spot for the for the enzymes to work correctly and get you the conversion to get you the sugars that you're looking for for the fermentability then the fermented beer obviously it's going to change during the fermentation process and if you dry hop and to give you an example you're aiming for that to be at like 4.5 of a ph in the finished beer now a stronger beer will have a lower ph and a weaker beer will have a higher ph and then you'll also have um, sour beers, for example, they're going to have a totally different pH as well because there's going to be that perceived um, sourness created from, say, lactic acid production during kettle sarn or if you're using one of the new, um, you know, Philly sour yeasts, you could expect your pH to be down just above 3, for example, 3.2, 3.5, whatever. So it's going to have that much higher level of sourness but pH generally it's good to get to know it um, if you want to start really simple with pH papers like they're really cheap and economical for to buy a packet with loads of them that'll last you a long time or if you want to get really technical and have the ability to check the temperature and the pH accurately with real premium quality equipment maybe you want one of the portable meters um, we do resell the solutions in small quantities for home brewers and also sell it um, in full litre quantities for professional brewers as well. So it's a very brief and generic overview in relation to pH. Basically what I'm wanting to highlight today is get to know it, um, whether that be a simple pH paper test um, that's, that's done in a second with a quick visual colour guide or whether you want to get really technical and start calibrating your own pH meters and taking readings um, it's up to you but if you want to make better quality beer these tools are here to help you do that so until next time thanks so much for watching please hit the little subscribe button and hit the bell so that you know when we release new content and uh, we appreciate your support at Getter Brewed and until next time happy brewing.